Thank you very much. Um, and yeah, thanks for everyone for being here today and uh, thank you for the invite. So um, look, we're here to talk about um, what actually says devices and sensors, but it's more about getting the information from those devices and sensors. And it's the work we've done um, in both the internet and also um, trough and tank monitoring, which is a lot of work that Mike's done. He's wearing the high vis, he's the one who does all the hard work. So, um, so we'll keep going, okay, and we'll get going from there. So we are asked about motivation and why people um, install this technology. And it really comes down to um, labour replacement. Um, now, that's not necessarily someone losing their job, that's just someone doing their job more efficiently. <coughs> um, just something to keep in mind during this presentation. Um, You've got a couple of options. Option A, pay an employee to check a tank that 95% of the time didn't need checking. Be pretty common if anyone's on the, on the land. Or option B, you check that same tank and 100 other sites yourself, whilst at Adelaide Oval as an example, and at the Bradman Bar. Now, you know, the technology's not just about so you can get off the farm and go and drink cans. Um, this is the example here. This tank is a 210 kilometre round trip. And it was previously, it was used to be checked three times a week in summer, 45 degree heat, land cruiser, employee, diesel, tyres, the whole shooting match. That was on um, Adelaide, May, or sorry, Murray River, Mains. That's why they had to keep checking it because if it did go, it, cost, it was a lot of money in water. Um, everyone wants and needs internet. Sorry, I'm going to have to move around a bit here because <coughs> the other thing I need is glasses. So. Um, everyone wants and needs internet and it generally, um, and it is generally there, you have to fight harder to get it. And in regional Australia, um, internet with all the following is pretty hard to find. Decent data plans, good latency, decent hardware, good support and service and something that's reliable. Um, why have we taken this path? You can't effectively operate a business on bad or low volume internet, that's, that's a given. Um, even though it's what some suppliers and other funded projects insist we in the country do. Um, it's not cost effective and it's stressful. I have had people in tears on the phone on about their internet. Um, a point to note for those who have absolutely no coverage and Michael got this information the other day that Telstra do cover a lot of South Australia's population. 99.6 is not bad, be a pretty good school grade. Um, but for them to cover the next 0.1 per cent, they'd need to double their coverage area. So, you know, the, the thing to take from that is on those really tough areas where there might be one or two people out there, unless it's government funded, they're not going to go out there and you can understand why. Um, in the area we cover, um, for our internet, Telstra have about 15 towers and we have about 130 points of presence in the same place. Now ours aren't million dollar towers, but um, they, are a, they are a place where you can get connectivity. Um, we've grown from a pretty simple question. Um, we get asked all the time, can we get connected economically? You know, we can connect anyone. You know, we can connect Birdsville if we wanted to. You just got to pay the money to get it there. So it's got to be economic. And producers have lots of their own ideas. They're the ones that come up with the ideas, but they lack the internet for it to function. So here's some examples. Um, a friend of ours down at Coonawarra, um, he called with the following issues. So this might be common for some as well. So he was sick of SIM cards. He had heaps of SIM cards. Um, he was tired of multiple data plans and contracts. Um, he had enough of dealing um, with overseas call centres. That might be something else that rings a bell. And in his words, he's just sick of the BS. He just wanted to go and farm. He's just sick of the rubbish. And he just wanted internet to a new location. <clears throat> From that one link that, uh, that was put together, um, that network has to grow. So this is his own internal network. It's grown to um, connect about 50 pumps and they're all on auto, uh, manual, remote stop start. The internet to three family houses, um, a small camera network, internal camera network, their solar array management's connected to it, and their, uh, their sensor uh, push alerts for temperature um, for his frost control. Um, the big part of that for him, to be able to control 50 pumps and, and um, a, a certain number of them for frost, the big saving is not only time, you know, getting around there, it's water. Massive saving in water. Um, and for down in the southeast, that's a big thing. So, yeah, well, in the whole country, really, isn't it? Um, so, what took multiple employees um, before? He can now do it all from the iPad. So, um, and those concepts 
um, is what brought us to where we are today and that's our little network that's grown from that one idea and that is still growing and we've also teamed up with Beam Internet who do a lot of work in the Mid-North and I've also over at KI, um, we've teamed up with them as well um, in covering some country. Here's another example, customer wanted internet, <coughs> that's all they wanted, they were up on the, up in the NARCAT or bottom of the NARCAT, wanted internet, they are on um, MBN satellite. Um, but he'd also mentioned while we were talking, because we went up to this hill and it's a good spot um, uh, for, a, for an internet tower, for us to be able to push internet around to them and their neighbours. But if you've read it there already, he mentioned in 20 years that his dad put 500,000 Ks on a ute just to check the tank. And this is in the southeast, this is up north. Um, so we got talking and said, well look, you know, we put a tower here, I'll chuck a camera on there for you and, and you can check it from there. And so we added a camera, as you can see, and he now has a 24-7 live feed. And that's just a little snippet of it, but you can see the water moving there. So all right, while we're up there, that tower had to connect to another tower. So we did the same for his neighbour. And it does sound like a toilet filling, I know, but that is a tank. So he would have to drive up the top of a fairly sensitive sand hill. And he, it, in stinking hot weather, um, he just... It, it just made tracks. He just wanted to stop doing that. So now he just checks it. And we got a text from him on the way up just by coincidence saying, loving the camera. So, um, why did we select this technology? Um, it uses the same technology you have at home. So it's not proprietary. It's not something that we've developed or anything like that. You know, this is used globally. It's Wi Fi. <laughs> it's the same stuff you would have connected to today. Um, therefore, it uses the same technology that drives the internet. Last I checked, the internet's not going anywhere anytime soon. Um, it does provide one platform um, for anything that's networkable. So anything you can either connect via wireless or connect via an Ethernet cable, you can connect into this and then it gets, to, it gets you to the internet. And it provides that agricultural road for the IoT. So um, that road does get, that, that road, <laughs> that term is getting used a lot. And we've seen, we've seen good examples and we've seen um, average examples. We don't think a lot of it is there yet, but you know we're having a go. Um, the other benefits of putting your own network in is that it can let you go where other times you normally cannot. Now that road co closed live fire is on Wirraminna Station, correct Mike? Somewhere up there? <laughs> Bottom of Bulacalina. So that's the, uh, that's the Air Force out there doing live fire. It's not someone out there shooting rabbits. So um, it is, a, uh, but as you can see, they've driven um, they've come from out of there. <laughs> they're, not they're not stopping from driving in, so they found that out after they got out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there was nothing wrong with us being in there. So you'll have to remind me when you're taken over, Mike. So, um, right, I'm going all right. Internal networks provide a multi purpose platform for anything that is internet enabled. I've explained that. Gives you live access to all your connected devices. Now, a connected device can be a camera. It could be a flow meter, um, remote stop start for pumps, you know, anything you can think of. Um, we worked out a long time ago, we might come up with an idea, but there's plenty of people smarter than us probably came up with it before us. So if it's out there and, and it can do something, it's going to be internet connectable. Um, connectable. Does not require monthly SIM or license charges at each location and there's no monthly support charges. You know, unless you've got an internet connection with us, um, outside that, you know, we don't, there's no fees, like it's your network. Um, you call us if something ever goes wrong, which is rare, um, but that's it. And if something does go wrong, we teach them how to repair and replace that equipment. We can do it with guidance. Um, Optus modem up on a hill west of Port Augusta. Um, whether it was lightning, we're not sure, something wasn't right up there. He thought it was fantastic because he did have phone coverage, so logged onto his laptop with TeamViewer and I connected into the network and guided him through, turned the camera on, it's the first time I met the bloke, <laughs> turned the camera on on the laptop and uh, we got it sorted. So, you know, this is sort of this cool stuff you can do. The other thing is the hardware's cheap, you know, it's a, it's a global thing. We use Ubiquiti um, hardware, it's a global um, product, so it's mass produced, so it is cheap. So the average replacement cost, it's about 200 bucks if something goes wrong. Is that my cue or, no? Righty eight. so where to from here? Um, hopefully we've got your good internet, um, everything's connected, and now what? As I said, the benefits in a network are not just limited to just that one purpose, and that's the key difference. If you're going to go put a network in, you know, to put camera systems in on tanks is, you know, we're talking around about three, three and a half thousand dollars. If you put one camera in, 
you know, by the time you get it into the house, five, six grand, it's a lot of money for one camera, unless that tank was 210 k's away. When you start putting in lots of cameras, then it gets to that thing of labour replacement. The person who used to do all that work, now they can go and do something else. And that's the difference. Okay. When are you kicking in, Mike? Righto, you <laughs> You just stand there and look bright in your shirt. Um, improving what we already have. Um, yeah, yeah. In agriculture, the IoT is already enabled and can be used with the following. Um, you know, EID, GPS, I don't need to read it all out. You can see everything there. Um, down the bottom there, we've uh, kicked in with a bit of stuff uh, from HydroWise, um, that remote stop start for pumps. Um, you know, HydroWise, when you look at the marketing, it's basically for a bit of irrigation and maybe your home, your home system. But there's a whole bunch of other things you can do with it. Moisture monitoring and temperature weather sensing. As long as it can connect to the internet, um, then it can connect to a wireless network. So the following pump, here's another example. 70k round trip from the homestead. Pump's been started, it used to be started every day. Sorry, it is started every day and runs for eight hours. But once you left, you had no visibility. So if you come back the next day and it hasn't pumped for that eight hours, you're a long way behind. So let's see if this works. Okay, so you see the little uh, lever in there pushing in, so that's been done from an app. Now the reason it takes so long to start is I did this last year, Michael was showing remotely how to use this system. It took me a while to hit, find the button. So here comes our token pigeon <coughs> in for a look. You can see where he obviously sits. <laughs> or, well, <laughs> rightio. There she goes. There's plenty of these pumps up there. How are we going for time? Right here. <coughs> One of the real keys that we found delivering a lot of stuff. We finally got a gear that's long. We can start a pump. And so how can you start a pump? So I'm going to press the button and tap. Go, run. Can you do that for me? I go, no, no, no. We just, you just press the button. And you go, yeah, but this is like a, I've got a 6B Cummins diesel. They've got a Murphy block. Can you come and start it for me? Oh, no. No, no, we just hit the button. He's like, but hang on. So it really is just a relay. Somehow you actually have to get a motor, whether it be a little Kubota diesel, six B car, <coughs> yeah, it might be the big centrifugal, hundred horsepower, 70, 75 kilowatt um, electric motors, to actually get them to start. And one of the real tricks is not not just somehow getting internet there, but you actually got to come up with a way to make all of these things that are not IoT. It's just the same motor you had, but you go, but it might be a thousand dollar, a five hundred dollar, even a one hundred dollar little thing, but alongside it, you got a twenty thousand dollar diesel. That's got to run and it's still got to be protected. And one of the real issues, I think, as an in industry is actually trying to get you know, what's already existing to actually become IoT or become connected. <coughs> and that little linear actuator there to get effectively what's already there to actually run and start, there's, there's quite a lot of work because every place you go has got a different motor. It's in place little components, there's lots of that. So as I said, these pumps can now be started and stopped from the phone or computer anywhere, anytime, and live video tells you it's working. That's the other thing. You know, it's 45 degrees, blowing its, blowing its backside off, <coughs> and, you're tr and you've, you've uh, checked the tank whenever last night. Are you going to trust that that tank is okay? You know, you might have sensors or whatever, but if you look at that camera, if the camera's on, you know. The camera's off. You better go and check that something something else has happened. Um, the biggest, uh, the big one of the biggest um, challenges we have up in the north, or anything that you stick up in the air, is Corellas. So they love the stuff. Another place to perch and chew everything up. So anyway, live video tells you it's working. Um, Radio. Here's another uh, run of uh, video. Some are a little bit old now, but you can see how uh, the one in the middle there. That was February last year up north. It was pretty rough then. So. Again, you know, on that one farm, 85 other cameras seeing is believing. Um, they look at a screen in the morning while he's eating his cornflakes, water run done. Um, here's another one, Wi-Fi calling internet repeater. So again, this is about bringing a whole heap of technologies into the one network. So does that everyone, or does anyone not know what Wi-Fi calling is? Is everyone shy? Good, everyone knows what Wi-Fi calling is. So. Um, current plans for, you know, say an Optus plan, $80, 500 gig a month. Optus Wireless, this is what was available at this site. Um, it's bigger plans than most of the other, well, than all the other providers on wireless. 32K link to the next repeater and then a 2K link into the homestead, rebroadcast to all stations, buildings, employees, um, quarters, giving them internet and mobile phone. Provides all re um, residents, as, as I've just said there, sorry, and 
it's on the same internal network as the camera network. So um, up north, um, the homesteads are all down the, in the valleys. So there's heaps of mobile phone signal up on the hill. You've got to get it down and that's what that simple thing does. And um, we don't spend anything on foundations. It's all using existing rocks. So, <laughs> and the reason why he uses existing rocks is he did try and drill into one spot and gave up on that idea never to happen again. So, okay, management platform. Yeah, non-penetrating, that's right. So the management platform, and I just went to one there before, and look, we haven't seen an all-encompassing platform yet. If anyone sees one, let us know. But companies are clamouring to achieve this, and if you see um, down in the main area there where we started, there was a lot of companies with all these, with all these things. But whether everything's all-encompassed on that, I don't think so just yet. But it won't be driven by the ag sector. Um, you know, we think it'll be developed by the, um, the IT industry to serve all industries. Someone some out there is going to ha need enough of this, in of this technology that it'll get developed and then it gets rolled out. It's like what we're using Ubiquity for. Ubiquity Wireless was set up not to check troughs and tanks. It was set up to get people internet where they couldn't get it. And that's in the city, not in, the, in regional areas. And that's the common denominator. Well, there you go. You got through unscathed, didn't you? Um, so thanks, everyone, for your time. Um, <laughs>